Hello friend, I hope you are having a wonderful weekend. Today I'm going to be addressing my four, uh, four, <laughs> my four favorite ways to keep algae out of the fish tank. Now, just a quick word of advice before we get started. Algae is going to happen in the tank. If you have a fish tank, you're going to get algae. And I think a lot of people going into better fish keeping or really any kind of fish keeping with freshwater fish, they don't realize that algae is a normal thing and that it's going to happen. So when it happens, they think, oh, ew, gross, it's bad. It's a terrible thing. And really it's a natural occurrence. However, you don't want it to completely overrun your tank, hence today's video. These four tips are going to keep your tank much, much cleaner, but remember that there will always be a little bit of algae present. Your tank doesn't have to be 100% spotless, and as a type A person, I get it. At first, I thought, oh no, there's algae in my tank just a week after I had first set it up and it was cycling, and it made me feel kind of icky inside. I don't know how else to describe it, but I just, I didn't want it in my tank. But after a little while, I came to the realization that it's normal, it's natural, and it's a natural part of having a fish tank. So don't beat yourself up if you have algae, but let's go ahead and cover these four tips to keep algae from overrunning your tank, which will give your better an overall cleaner environment. Number one, keep your tank away from an open window. I have a tank right here and it is in front of an open window so when the sun sets it will shine directly on the tank and if you get a lot of sunlight exposure and exposure from the fish tank light all that summed up it's a lot of exposure and that will encourage algae to grow so I do recommend having a fish tank further away from the window or maybe have it in front of a curtain that kind of diffuses the light or if you want to have it in front of a window like I do keep the fish tank light on only an hour or two in the mornings and then have it shut off so that when the sun sets then you have an equal amount of light this is just something that you can play around with it's not going to hurt your fish tank if it gets a lot of sunlight just know that the more sunlight you get the more algae is prone to grow number two snails snails are a huge key and they are really really important to have in your tank if you don't want a lot of snails just start with one you could get a nerite snail or a mystery snail although i usually recommend the nerite because they're easy to find in fish stores and they're also very easy to care for these are not high maintenance snails at all and they do not reproduce in freshwater tanks so as long as you have one you'll be all right i've had one for a long time he's still going strong and he helps to clean up with the algae a lot. Some people really do not like ram's horn snails. I personally do because my bettas do keep them in check, but if you have a betta that's not really a hunter and you get a couple of ram's horn snails, they will reproduce very, very quickly and you could have a massive snail population on your hands, which depending on the type of person you are, you will either despise it or appreciate it. It works out for me. But if you feel a little bit differently and you just want to play it safe, start with one snail, preferably a nerite or a mystery snail, and then go from there depending on how you feel. Number three, avoid overfeeding. If you give your betta too much food and it sinks to the bottom and it's not being eaten, it's going to break down and release ammonia. And if kept in your tank, is going to encourage algae to grow because they feed on that type of stuff and it's just going to get gross really, really quickly. So when you feed your betta, only feed him in tiny amounts at a time and watch him eat it before you put more in his tank. I like to start with a very small pinch of bloodworms and mysis shrimp whenever I feed my betta and I watch him eat it before I put another pinch or two in there for his daily feeding. And last but not least, make sure that you are cleaning your tank, preferably once a week. Now, this does kind of depend on the size of your tank. If it's 10 gallons, you may not have to do it weekly, but I do still recommend it, especially if you want to keep algae under control. You don't have to do anything big. You can do 30 to 50% water changes, which just means that you're siphoning around the rocks and then whatever water is removed with it, you replace with fresh water. And it's just as easy as that. Typically, whenever I do weekly water changes, I'll remove about this much. I don't quite remove half of it just because I don't find it necessary. But if you are struggling with algae, 
I recommend starting up a weekly water change, 30 to 50% of the water removed as you siphon the rocks. All right, friend, I hope this video was helpful. If you had a favorite point, or maybe you want to share an experience you had on dealing with algae to help others watching this video. If so, head on to the comments and leave your experience or feedback there. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing. There's so much free content that I know you will find helpful. Also, if you have not yet, head on over to the Betta Fish Forum. It's my free Facebook group for Betta parents such as yourself. It's a wonderful way to learn and grow with other people in all walks of life. And it's completely free. As long as you have Facebook, you can join it. There will be a link in the description so you can easily find it. All right, I hope you and your Betta have a wonderful rest of the weekend and I will see you in the next video.